to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I have a returning guest with us today. I'll we'll introduce you to him in a few minutes. Hey, it's uh, the beginning of a new year <clears throat> and I'm feeling dangerous. I, I just went through kind of a bronchial event that kind of shut me down. No surfing, no working out for about a week. Um, maybe my voice was hoarse for cheering Baylor winning the um, my alma mater, Baylor University winning uh, the Texas Bowl in Houston, Texas. I'm not sure, but I think it's time for us all to get a little bit more dangerous this year. I'm resolved uh, to speak more pointedly to the issues, uh, draining the swamp when it comes to the church, when it comes to our nation, and uh, not holding back. My ministry is primarily one of converting hearts, evangelization, <clears throat> because that's the key to it all anyway. But, you know, a um, our, our republic only stands based on if, the, if its people are virtuous. Uh, our founding fathers uh, in the Declaration of Independence said we have the right to uh, pursue life, liberty, and happiness. Uh, and you can't, have, uh, liber you can't have life unless you have life in Jesus. And America has started to mistake liberty for license. Liberty, in Thomas Aquinas' uh, words, was to the, uh, the freedom to pursue the good. And we need to start speaking to our social justice warriors about what truly is good. America was founded by Protestant people slash Enlightenment philosophers uh, with one Catholic represented amongst the constitutional founders. But they um, kind of uh, stole Catholic natural law to kind of get it to get it going. Uh, and w it, the nation uh, needs to get back to natural law. We need to look at uh, the Bible. We need to look at the world and how God's, how God's established it, and we need to start li living according to his, his, his principles. And the pursuit of happiness, it's innate in every human being to pursue happiness. Aristotle, though, said that the, the key to happiness is to pursue the, the four cardinal virtues of justice, self-mastery, prudence, and fortitude. Of course, Paul added faith, hope, and love to those virtues. But it's time to call uh, the so-called virtue warriors or social justice warriors back to true, uh, the truth of Catholic teaching of nat natural law. The Republic is lost. We've drifted so far away from, from, uh, from the values that are going to hold our nation together. But we Catholics have the ammunition and what we need in order to get our nation on the right track. You know, the word for economy, the root word for that, the Latin word for that is the word family. The economy, the social structure is all based on family. Uh, and we need to have uh, the foundation of that, those families, the men, to get angry. And what I mean by that is get determined. Uh, because, uh, you know, my, my theme for this year is Bear Wozniak Unchained. I'm just not going to hold back anymore. I'm going to start speaking um, the truth in love. And that's why I thought I should get uh, someone like Joe McLean from Houston, Texas, to join me. Uh, if you're watching him on our, on our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, you can see that one of the advantages of being in a radio studio is you either have a headset on or a hat on and uh, to hide our bad hair. So, Joe McLean, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Praise be to Jesus. Good morning, Bear. You know, I was in, in your studio about two weeks ago, I think, or less, maybe less than that. Yeah. And I would say within three minutes, you committed three mortal sins. Oh, wow. And I was actually uh, shocked and astonished, and I'm not sure. Did you repent? Did, what did you do about that? Well, you do know I, what I, you do know what I'm speaking about. Well, let me just re, let me just think for a second. I, I want to say I started the conversation off with Giga Maggie's. I think that's probably now how you said we it. Start. You just said it again. Yeah. So I'm, uh, where, remind me again where the mortal sin is. I mean, well, uh, it's you know, Giga first of all, first of all, uh, I, 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 my, I got I got a nosebleed just from the moment you said that. My blood pressure went through the roof. I mean, no, no offense, Waco is probably one of the best JUCO colleges in the country. Baylor, the university. You know, I'm a Catholic, but I went to, no, I didn't go to the University of Notre Dame. I went to the Baylor University. Sikkim Bears. Oh, Matt, Baylor. Matt. Baylor. I, I get confused. I mean, which, which, Ma hey, listen, badminton is a fine sport, 
But uh, when it comes to football, Giga Maggie. Hey, hey, man, uh, Matt Rule, you know, <laughs> he was the New York Jets almost stolen from us. Baltimore Colts, Colts almost took it from us last year. But Matt Rule is a, is a real strong, I mean, he's just a good man, real good man of integrity, a strong Christian. And, and you know, um, I, I just can't uh, ever forget when I went to Baylor, when the Aggies came to college, came into our school and died uh, Judge Bears, uh, the statue of Judge of the Judge. Uh, our founder was in in red, his yeah. neck. Yeah, yeah. And you well, know, we you used to have we used to have Aggie sticks. We used to have things called barricades. I don't know if they do that anymore, but no one could come into campus without a freshman or a sophomore making sure that that car didn't have any Aggies in it. <laughs> you stopped at the gate and checked. Huh? The Aggie sticks were axe handles painted in green and gold. <laughs> and the deal was if the girls were in a car in the car and they were on a score that each freshman had to kiss them for 10 seconds. And you know how hard it is for freshmen to, to know how to count to 10. So that could take a while. So maybe the Texas Aggies did us a favor, but um, yeah, maybe, maybe, um, you know, you know, now that I've apprised you of the situation to, for you to continue to say that would be, you, you, you know, a mortal sin. So a let's mortal just, sin. Well, I'll, I'll go to confession later. How about that? Yeah. You need to do that. <laughs> I, I, when I got inducted into the Catholic Sports Hall of Fame, there was a guy there, I forget his name, who was inducted as a Notre Dame football player who had fumbled the football, I think, three or four times in the first half of this game. I think it was Eric Parshigan and uh, was his coach. And then he scored the winning touchdown in the second half. Does that but, make up for it? <laughs> but when he came to practice on Monday, he goes, what are you doing here, man? You, you, you committed three mortal sins. Uh, he made him go to confession at all five chapels before he came back to practice. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. What are we going to do, though, now, Joe? I mean, I, I, I'm at a loss now. I mean, college football is over <laughs> for you still You still surf, right? Nine you months. Don't care, you don't care what month it is. You still surf. Yeah, I just uh, I just don't know what to do. I don't watch pro football. I, 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 uh, but, neither do I. But, but college football, just you know, I just love the adrenaline of it and all of that. You know, so. and that's for A and M in particular. You know, the twelfth man and the uh, that the, was the, cool. That the is Yelp cool. squad. I mean, it, yeah. it is an experience to go to these games and to feel the camaraderie. I was listening to Father John Ricardo uh, give a homily yesterday, actually on YouTube, and he 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 used A and M, the Aggies, there at uh, Kyle Field to to describe maybe the great cloud of witnesses that surround us at Holy Mass and how they're cheering us on and. And, uh, you know, we do our soul does sense a bit of that. Right. When we're at games, you know, you 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 love that sense of look at all of these people filling the stadium with a common denominator. They're here to support and cheer on their team. They're wearing their colors. Their pride uh, for their team is high. Their their energy is is intoxicating in some ways. If it could only be for the love of the sacred heart of Christ. Right. If it can only be for zeal for souls to transform the world, our very mission that was given to us by our Lord at his ascension. You know, it's like it's almost sad. We love, you know, sports. We love football. Why can't it be that much more for for the faith? And that's and I think that's, it really is like that. I mean, I, I've envisioned that same thing that, you know, at the Eucharist, the, the saints aren't just like all bored up there. They're, cheer, <laughs> right. they're cheering us on, you know, yeah. and when we when we do a when we somehow uh overcome a challenge and we do we go that extra mile for the lord there's that we should have that same attitude like paul wrote to timothy you know but i buffet my bodies he said you know run run the run the race you know yeah um and i think we should all, we should have that uh we should have that feeling of fourth and fourth and goal you know and yeah and uh and punch punch it in but you know we had an experience uh, a couple of days ago my son was selling one of his sports equipment things that he has yeah and uh it so happened he got a good deal on it at the sporting goods store, and it had Florida State Seminoles st stickers on it, or like it was made custom made for them, and he didn't care. And some guy came by to buy it, and he just like he just threw a fit, you know, because he's a, a Gator fan. So, but we're, we we are so uh, we we uh, are not only, we're Christians, and we embrace all of our brothers and sisters. But as Catholics, uh, we have to realize, you know, it's it's the fourth quarter in a sense, um, in America. And we need to start standing up for, um, uh, not, not in a, in a, with a critical spirit, but we have the solution. We need to be grounded in our catechism. We need to be grounded in Reverend Navarro. We need to be in social teaching. We need to be grounded in the moral teaching. 
because we should have a ready answer for the reason for our hope. Mm. Hey, Joe, where are you right now? I'm in Houston, Texas, sitting no. in my studio. Yeah, and so give me, uh, give me a ten, 20 seconds. Tell the people what you, what you do every morning. So I am a general manager of a Catholic radio station on the Guadalupe Radio Network here in Houston, and I co-host, or I host uh, two shows, really, Evangelium Live, which is a local show in Houston, and I also co-host our network-wide program called GRN Alive, along with my colleague Dave Palmer. And uh, Bear, you were on that show just a couple of weeks ago when you were passing through town to pay your due homage to your your beloved bears, but... Uh, by the grace of God, we were able to redeem a little bit of your time for yeah. more edifying purposes by having you come here before you had to go to the airport. Well, hey, give, give us a website real quick before we take this break. So they can GRNonline.com. GRN. Why is it GRN? The Guadalupe Radio Network. Dot com, and they can find you there. Yes. And, and my, personal, my personal site is CairoImpactMedia.com. And that's spelled? C H I R H O impactmedia.com. Okay, we'll talk about what that means when we get back. This is The Bear. We'll be right back with more of The Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to The Bear Wozniak Adventure. I got to thank. Our two sponsors, Solidarity Healthcare, we love those guys. I've been, I've been a big fan of them for a couple of years. Brad Hahn and all of his people there, very bold and brave what they're doing uh, in pr providing alternative health health uh, care. You know, similar to health insurance, that allows you to uh, cover your family in a way that uh, is true to the Catholic moral teaching. Members of my family have used it for a long time, uh, use them, and we love them. They're just they're they're right on top of everything. Any, any need that you have. And, so, and we're so proud to have them as a sponsor. You can find them at our website, deepadventure.com. And, of course, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Oh, my God. They are amazing. Uh, you know, I, I got, got to meet Tom Gripe, the CEO at the Napa Institute, and we hit it off. And um, he said he wanted to sponsor our show. Well, little did he know that I uh, went and applied for a car loan in Hawaii uh, while in the middle of doing our, our, our season three of Long Ride Home so I was incredibly busy and not available. And this one woman just took care of us, hit and miss here and there. And they gave me a, a credit union car loan in Hawaii. It made it so easy. Everything was just signed over the, um, over the Internet. And then when I went to the football game there this year, stopped in and checked everybody out. It's just, they're, just, they're professional. They love Jesus. So you can use them for uh, any of your financing or investment or banking needs. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, uh, their, their website's at our website. Too. So we also want to invite you guys um, to go to our website, deepadventure.com. Subscribe to our newsletter and go to our web store. We've got uh, both of my books, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul, and all kinds of long ride home stuff. And uh, would invite you to, to go there and, and check it out. Uh, today we have as my uh, co-adventure guide, Joe McLean. Uh, I, he took off his baseball hat, if you're watching on, on the Bear Wasp channel on YouTube, <laughs> And his hair is good. His hair looks good. Um, if I took it's my a little head, light. a little bit light. But you, but if you, if I take my headset off, it's it's astonishing what happens. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm glad I get to wear a headset when I'm on the radio, on on YouTube. Hey Joe, so you know we, when we when we when we left this, we were talking about, um, you know the crisis really in the country and how we need to, uh, men need to start stand up again. Uh, and you mentioned your website. What is it again? CairoImpactMedia.com. Okay, spell that, and then, and then I'd love for you to explain it. C-H-I-R-H-O, Cairo, impactmedia.com. And the Cairo is uh, it's a, uh, two Greek letters that combine to give us the name of, of Jesus Christ. And it, this was the symbol that Constantine saw in the sky that he adopted and put onto the shields of his army and defeated his enemy at the Battle of Milvan Bridge there in Rome and made— legal uh, the Christianity, brought Christianity out of from under the persecution and, and allowed them to flourish. It even became their one of their biggest patrons 
building basilicas and churches and, uh, you know, help them to come together to try to decide the Arian heresy, the Council of Nicaea. He himself was a very imperfect man. He was uh, fraught with mortal sins. But on his deathbed, he was uh, baptized, unfortunately, by an Arian bishop, but he was baptized. So the, the Cairo is an important uh, symbol for our faith. It is part of our identity as uh, as human beings to being, you know, we are followers of Christ. And, and I think that's a something we need to remember more now, more than ever, because I think, as we've said already, it seems like the weight of the world is getting heavier. And it also feels, and it sounds super crazy, but it feels like the clock is ticking and we're running out of time. I mean, just this last week, uh, Bear, the APA came out with a new document, guidelines for uh, boys and men practice guidelines. Now, the APA is for psychologists and counselors. And when their guidelines come out, it affects, it ripples through society. So uh, psychologists and counselors, psychiatrists, uh, graduate study programs and universities all over the world will be paying attention to these new guidelines. And the next generation of these people are going to be following them. So, and the, and uh, a good friend, a loyal Catholic psychologist sent me his interpretation of this. And he was totally shocked by what he read in this document. It's, it's rock full of, uh, very LGBT type of uh, mentality, sort of emasculating and effeminizing uh, the boys and men. He was also surprised that the one place that the, in the entire document where religion is mentioned at all on page 16 of the document, it says that religion can be a barrier that limits father's level of contact with their children. The one place it's mentioned in the entire document and it's listed in a negative light. I think that is a good litmus to where we're at in society and the need for guys like you, for me and every lay faithful to take our faith extremely seriously, to live it within our homes and then to share it with the world. Because well, if we don't, the yeah, hours I, away. I know that that, that used to have a, a listing for people that were uh, that had homosexual tendencies as being a disorder as being disordered and uh, in need of of counseling and that that w was taken out of there a long time ago um and i and I, f it, I feel bad because you're you're you know i, I worked in a in a in a business once uh, as a nonprofit, kind of helping them through a nine-month period <clears throat> child they were they, they were an agency that received a hundred thousand phone calls a year from children that were feeling suicidal or being abused and the hotlines were handled mostly by gay men. Uh, and and it, it, it was shocking to me to find that out, but I got to know them. I have a lot of compassion for people that are kind of caught up in that, in that conundrum. And uh, most of them had uh, stories to tell me when they were young, how they were imprinted by another male. And uh, that, I'm leading into this uh, to say that what's going on in the church right now, uh, I, I'm hearing the Pope say things like, when there's predatory uh, behavior of a priest um, you know, on a young man uh, or a young, someone under 18. But we've got a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, of, of pressure going on with a pre, uh, ma priests on, on a man, you know, the younger men in the seminaries, and then priests um, also um, having taken this vow of celibacy and, and uh, the teaching of the church on, on, on same-sex, um, uh, having sex with an, a man, another man or another woman, uh, being... Uh, a mortal sin, and uh, it just seems like the whole the, the church is, ne needs to have a big wake up call. It's not just the priests against you know young boys, but it's priests against uh, other young men and priests with each other. And I guess I forget the name of the the, the priest that recently reduced re, uh, released a study that 86 percent increase in homosexual priests coincides with the 86 percent increase in um, sex abuse. What what do you say to that? It's a it's a major problem. And I think, as I've said, since really the McCarrick scandal broke, you're never going to deal with the problem properly until you have the courage to deal with it head on. And when we sidestep the reality of the problem in a way that we hope will be less offensive to those that might perceive it as offensive, well, we are re-victimizing the victims and we are not being charitable to those struggling with same-sex attraction, especially those in the clergy. So there's a charity that, and a justice that's at, being violated in all this. And what I mean by that is 
when you look at the 2004 John Jay report, 80 plus percent of the victims were postpubescent males. When you look at the 2017 report to the USCCB uh, on, on the sex abuse scandal, the 2017 report, 80 plus percent were post-pubescent males. The study that you just referenced, who was a priest, Sullen. and again, I don't, I don't remember his name I think either. The Sullen report, I believe. Yeah. The Sullen report, Father Sullen. Same the information is very, very uh, similar. 80 plus percent uh, victims are post-pubescent males. Uh, McCarrick's victims were post-pubescent males. Many you mean of 18 the, and over. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not even 14. Yeah, but see, and, what bothers well, me is the church addressed that to some degree, right? But they, it's like they're ignoring the fact that there's 18, 18 year olds and over that are going through this, too. I totally agree. It's like as if <laughs> minors, you know, let's just minors, 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 minors. Listen, no human being should be abused in any way, shape or form, no matter how old they are, no matter their gender. None of that. No human being should be abused. But what about all these seminarians that were abused as if they don't count because they're adults? You know, somehow consensual makes it OK. It wasn't for necessarily consensual if. If they were put right. under pressure, like, um, you know, but even it, if it were, it's still a violation of their chastity, right? It's still a violation of their vow that they gave to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to remain chaste and to pour their lives out for uh, for his people. And they violated that. So sacred, if we're going to drain the swamp, vow. we got to drain the whole swamp. It's not just yeah. it's kind of like, well, we're going to take care of this issue about the pedophilia. But the, all these other things we're just going to let kind of slide and, it's, and we're not going to let that happen. Uh, we're yeah. talking with uh, Joe McLean. He is uh, he's a man of God. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a man that speaks quite often to uh, men's conferences around the country. Um, and uh, we'll be talking more, more about, about this whole issue when we get back. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we want to invite you to go to the YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak, W-O-Z-N-I-C-K, and subscribe to our radio show. Uh, it gets, it'll, if you push the subscribe button, you not only get to hear the radio show when it comes out on Saturday nights, but you can go and watch all of the, all of the, uh, the radio shows that we've done, and, and you get to watch them because it's a video, video version of it. So we'll be right back with more with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is your guest, Bear, your host, Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Um, I think my name for this year is Bear Wozniak Unchained. Uh, I, 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 came, I came, uh, into 2019 with a, a sort of a, a fury and, uh, and it's time to unchain. It's time to unchain and speak more directly. I have a friend of mine. It means a lot to me. He gave me the Catholic catechism, the small little traveling catechism that I, I travel with and I teach every morning in my Facebook live. Ocean Sunrise Catechism on uh, Facebook. Uh, he surfed with me. He came to my first deep adventure retreat uh, here in Cocoa Beach. He invited me to do a, a surfing retreat with him out in Houston, Texas. He's a cast member of Long Ride Home, two seasons on Long Ride Home. And he's a frequent guest on our show. And he has been speaking out about the situation uh, in the Catholic Church, not just speaking out about it, but saying this is what we're going to do about it. When we see something happening, we're going to rally people and say, Write to your book, bishop, show up at this event. If um, a certain priest is speaking uh, with the last name of Martin, go there and protest it. Uh, and he was silenced this last week. He was told to cease and desist by his superiors. And, of course, I'm speaking to Father Mark Goring. What do you know about that situation, Joe? First, I'd like to say how proud I am of Father Mark Goring. Number one, because he, he realized that we can't just sit idly by and do nothing while we watch the world burn, while we watch souls, you know, fall into greater error. As a pastor, he realized he can't do that, and he wasn't willing to die without trying to do something and talking about the issues directly. So I was proud of him for just talking forthrightly about the issues uh, and calling a spade a spade. And then number two, when his superior said to him, cease and desist, out of obedience, he complied. And I think that is so powerful. Uh, St. Padre Pio, he was oppressed twice by his superiors, by even the Pope. And he acquiesced. He never, you know, rallied the troops, you know, to rebel against authority over him. And it didn't matter whether or not there was actually 
uh, you know, some complicit corruption on behalf of his superiors. It didn't matter. He recognized that obedience was a virtue and it was the virtue that Christ came. I mean, Christ was tempted to not die for my sins. I mean, the agony of the garden is the devil whispering into Jesus's ear. You know that Joe McClain, he is not worthy of your blood. And Jesus says, I beg to differ and I'll suffer for him just for him if I had to. You know, that's the temptation because he says, shall I not drink the cup that my father has given me to drink? So I have to say that Father Mark Goring is, must be in a very difficult situation right now because as a man, his heart is, I want to storm the enemy front. I want to charge against them and combat them as a man. But he realizes that he is a man of, under obedience and he, like Christ, accepts that obedience. And I am just proud of him for no matter what, accepting that and courageously displaying that obedience to us. I think too often, especially in a Western society like in America, you know, we, we are very self-reliant people, right? We take the world on by ourselves and we act like we are the game changers and we are in control of this whole thing and nobody can dare tell us what to do. You know, that's not the case. We live by the grace of God by his very thought of us as how we exist. So when we obey even when it means we can't charge the enemy, well, we have to trust that God's going to bring some greater good out of this. And so I just want to say right out of the gate, I'm proud of Father Mark Goring for both speaking out and for being humble enough to accept that obedience, even it when it says everything. It says everything. You know, if you want to hear, my, my la I, I got to interview Father Mark Goring. I might have been one of the last people to interview him before he got this order. You can go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and listen to, to that interview with him. But, you know, the kingdom of darkness is run by rebellion. Uh, yeah. by intimidation. Uh, and the, but the kingdom of light is, is, a, is, is about uh, having a, a heart that's yielded to the Lord. And the thing about it is it's kind of like too late because Father Mark uh, stirred, the, stirred things up. And yeah, there's a lot of people that are already uh, carrying the flag, you know, that he had to let go of. I, and I, I, don't th I really don't think it'll be for long. I think something really exciting is going to happen. But uh, others of us are picking up that flag and running with it. So the rally in Christ should be if you hear about something going on in your area that you know isn't right, uh, you know, put a petition together, uh, get your friends on Facebook or wherever to sign it, deliver it to your, to your bishop, but do it in the spirit of Father Mark Goring. Yeah. Don't do it with some sort of rebellious, angry sort of tone. But show up if you hear a speaker or someone is coming uh, to town uh, who shouldn't be teaching, show up and, and, have, and have a a prayer rally outside while they're speaking and, 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 and start to stand our ground. It's important, right? I mean, we get one shot at this life. There's no, no mulligans. There's no makeovers. There's no, well, I got that wrong. Hopefully the next time I'll get it right. When we die, we, we give an account. We have to give an answer for how we lived our life, every word we've said, and why we did not use the gifts, the talents, the aptitudes that the Lord has invested into us for his purposes and for the salvation of souls. And, you know, so I think that's an encouragement. Father Mark is an encouragement to us. And there are others, uh, you know, that are out there who are trying to encourage us to live our faith seriously. And, I, you know, it's funny, Bear, I was just thinking this the other day. The power of a father to make or break his family and those around him. It, it seems mind-boggling to me that the Lord, creator of all the universe, would give us poor, weak vessels such power. Because I recognize in my own family, I got six kids, married 18 years, six kids. And I recognize that when I have a bad day and I don't temper myself, I don't uh, act prudentially, I don't speak prudentially. And I, and I get, you know, if I fly off the, the handle or whatever, cause I'm, I'm edgy, it automatically ruins the day for my wife and my kids. And then you can see it in them. They start acting crazy. But when I go the other way, and maybe I pray harder, pray more, lead them in prayer. I see how it affects them too. The power of a dad to make or break society. That's true for Father Mark. It's true for the Pope. It's true for you and it's true for me. It's true for every man on planet Earth. We have a special unique charism. And for, unfortunately, the vast majority of men have, have uh, basically given up. They've, they've just given over this beautiful charism that God has entrusted them with so that they can pursue the world, the flesh, and the devil. And they're not satisfied. They're not happy. They're not on fire. They're not living good lives. I mean, they're, they're miserable people. 
and we can see it. We can just look around and just see it everywhere. I challenged a friend of mine the other day. Um, I sent him uh, a sent out a YouTube video to a few of my friends um, about a priest that was challenging men to be manly, and he was like, "Right on, that's all right," you know. And then I I, I messaged him privately and I said, "Do you um do you really affirm the teaching of the Catholic Church?" He goes, "Absolutely." Um, and you believe in the teaching authority of the church? Absolutely. Well, why have you um, been with this same woman for 17 years and never married her? Right. <laughs> yeah, amen. Uh, why do you present yourself to communion, you know, which makes that sin even more grave? And why do you live that life when you, she had children and you have children? And look what a mess it's caused in your family. Yeah. Um, amen. Uh, um, is it making you happy is what I asked him. How is it working for you? Um, I'm not being critical here. I'm just being definitive. There are people listening right now who have, who have accepted the Protestant view of cheap grace, of once saved, always saved. It's, it's a very presumptive thing to think that you'll uh, experience God's mercy at the end of the day when you've lived uh, in, in this laissez-faire sort of uh, attitude towards God. There are men, I'm calling you out, you're cowards. If you're, if you're with a woman and, you're, and, you're, and you have sexual relations with her, and you have no intention of marrying her, um, I'm calling you out. Either let her go and let her find a real man, or man up yourself, go to your priest, go to confession, and ask what the steps are you should take to bring that relationship into a holy bond of marriage. If you need to go through an annulment, hey, I, I went through an annulment. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, it was so cleansing and so purifying, and I've helped so many other men that have gone through that. And then I found this incredible, incredible uh, joyful woman, wise uh, woman to spend my life with. But I'm calling you men out. If you call yourself a man and you're, and you're sleeping with a woman who's not your wife, step up, uh, either marry her or let her go or, but, or, or, or find that path towards marriage. But the, the reason why is not just because it's mortal sin, it's because you're not happy and you don't know why. It's because you don't have the grace of the Holy Spirit in your marriage. Joe McLean, if, they want to, uh, if, men, if people want to invite you to come speak, especially to men's groups, how do they reach you? CairoImpactMedia.com. That's C-H-I-R-H-O, CairoImpactMedia.com. I got a movie coming out on Ash Wednesday. Oh, it's awesome. I've seen, seen clips. Yeah. Tell Praise us about Jesus. it. It's a documentary film called The Other Side of Fear, helping men find healing, forgiveness, and courage. Essentially, we're... We're, we're dragging the darkness out into the light for, for wounded men, right? So men are afraid. It's not just fear of heights or conflict. It's really a fear. It's an emasculated nature. It's a fear of rejection, a fear of failure, a fear of not being lovable. That's more to the heart, right? So we shine Christ into that darkness. We connect their woundedness to their fears, and we give them a come-to-Jesus moment in the film. And we've got all these men sharing their wounds, their vulnerability. We've got some subject matter experts. We go on a long journey. We went through many we'll, states. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get back. Um, yeah. This is Bear Wozniak. We're talking with Joel McClain. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have to remind you that Long Ride Home Season 1, people love that show. EWTN played it, I think, a total of 20 times. The Armed Forces Network uh, played our 10 episodes Season 1 also. But a lot of people only got to see three or four of the episodes, and they didn't see them in sequence. But you can do that by going to iTunes, by going to Prime Video, or going to YouTube. If you go to our YouTube channel, there's a, the, uh, Episode 1 is up for free. But go there and uh, buy the season of, of um, Long Ride Home season, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. That helps fund season two. Season two um, is in its final stages of being produced and will be out soon. But please go to iTunes, Prime Video, or Google Play and, and, and sit down and watch the Power Watch uh, uh, Long Ride Home. We're talking with Joe McClain. Uh, He's a general manager of a radio station, one of the Guadalupe radio stations in Houston, Texas, father of six. He speaks to a lot of men's conferences. And before we took our break, Joe, I was really challenging the men. I, I said, I challenged them, if you're, if you're um, living with a woman and you have no intention of marrying her, you're a coward. But having said that, um, 
a lot of times that's because there's a real need of healing mm. in that man. And this, this new film uh, that, uh, kind of addresses that. And men are lonely. And they're intimidated yeah. by other men. And we need to step up and help each other. Hence, uh, all the small men's groups and men's conferences. Tell us more about that film and uh, what you see as a prescription to heal uh, the manliness in men. Not, not machoism, uh, not masculinity, manliness, manly virtue. You know, too many of us bear our pretending, right? We put on a mask of, of machismo, a mask of strength, a mask of courage, a mask of uh, bravado, a mask of intelligence, a mask of I've got this whole thing figured out and I'm as slick and got it all worked out. And a lot of times that's just skin deep because really what we're doing is we're self-medicating to protect our fragile little heart from being wounded because we're afraid. We're afraid of all kinds of things. And we don't want the world to know about that. And we certainly don't want to share that woundedness with, with each other. When I learned, Bear, back in 2008, I gave my very first witness testimony at a men's conference. And it was a terrible, I did a terrible job. It was like 14 minutes and it was horrendous. And when I was done, um, I shared my wound of how I was raised on pornography, thanks to my dad. And I uh, was uh, trying desperately to be a man and made in his, his image and likeness and a man that he would be proud of. And ultimately that led to terrible decisions I made in my life, abortion being among them. And at the end of that terrible talk I gave, there was a line of guys crying, waiting to talk to me. And it like hit me like a two by four across the face. The Lord was showing to me how when a man is allowing himself to be bold and vulnerable all at the same time, it can pierce the most crusted hearts, hardened hearts of secular men. Because for the first time in their life, they have seen an authentic masculine uh, example of vulnerability. And they have, for the first time, been able to come to grips with admitting their own woundedness. Now, I love doing that at a Catholic men's conference for one reason, because there's almost always confession available. And that man can go into that confession and receive mercy from the Almighty. And that is a powerful, powerful thing. But what he needs is a follow-up. He needs a he needs a peer group of other knuckleheads who want to grow in grace to, to work with him, to journey with him, to walk with him. And that's part of the, what the bear cave is all about, right? I mean, it's that peer group yeah. environment. Now, the film, the film in some ways is trying, to, is trying to recreate what happens at men's conferences all over the country. And, to, and the design of the film is to target these secular, lukewarm men. So men who might identify as Catholic or Christian, but really are secular minded men. We want to we want to reach them where they're at in the digital space and get and compel them to maybe even uh, bait them into watching this film so that they'll have this come to Jesus moment. Now, we have to send them to a group. They have to be planted in a foundation of a fraternity of men who want to grow in grace or or they're just going to be succumb back to the weeds, right? Back to the, 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 the rocks and the, and the birds that come steal away that grace. So this film is designed to take these men on a journey, to reach them at their heart, to show them that their woundedness can be healed. And that no matter what they've done in their life, no matter what they've seen in their life, no matter what is going on in their life, Christ can conquer all of that, heal them, and their life can truly get to the other side of their fear. And it's amazing because, you know, I'm afraid of heights. But you know what? If it's God's will that I live today, no height can stop that, right? By if the I stopped, can leap a troop. By the I can I, leap a wall, right? Right. By the exactly. I can lead a troop. By the I can bend a bow yeah. of bronze. By the I can leap a wall. Go ahead, Joe. The Catechism of the Catholic Church. I think this is one of your favorite books, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. I love it. Yeah, it is a fantastic book. How many men have read this? Should it, every, it, everyone should read the, a page of the Catechism every day. It, meditate or is on it, it just too heady for you guys? Grow up, pull up your bootstraps, be a man, pick up your Catechism, and, and eat away at it every single day. And I guarantee you'll be benefited by this because one, you'll know your faith more. Two, you'll grow in grace, you'll grow in your devotion. It's a devotional, trust me. It is. It's and, meant to be read by as that. And, you know, paragraph 1765 talks about fear. And it says the apprehension of some evil, I'm paraphrasing, some evil that may or may not even happen. We have this apprehension of things we've done and apprehension of what may come. You know what? If we live in God's grace, in God's time, if we accept everything as though it's from his hand, 
you know what? Praise be to Jesus. God's will be done for my life. It's, if it's his Amen. will, I die today, then I die. Amen. If it's his will that I live today, then I live. Praise Jesus either way. And I think that's what we hope to do with the film. It's called The Other Side of Fear. And with God's grace, we'll release it on Ash Wednesday. How, how do they find, find it? You know, it, this is, uh, I am a one-man band here. So, I, you know, I feel this, it, man. <laughs> this is where we've that. been lacking severely. Right now, you can find us on Facebook. You just go to Living His Life. Living His Life, that's where that part of the hat comes from here. Living His Life on Facebook. There's a group there. You can get connected there. But it will be available ubiquitously once I release the film on Facebook, YouTube, and everywhere else. We're, we're, gonna, we're still working on getting that set up. Right now, I'm spending countless hours in the chair editing the film and oh, just man. trying to get it ready. I, 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 do, I sit in that chair every day. And by the way, this is, we're speaking with Joe McClain. He's a man that likes to use five-letter words, five-syllable <laughs> words. You big... <laughs> Quit us leave. <laughs> no, he he's. Uh, I'm gonna add I a, gonna a say six syllable. I, I, I was. No, I, oh, don't go there, man. Sick and bears. <laughs> no, but I know what you mean, Joe. When I wrote my first book, deep deep in the way of a surfing guide to the soul, it really opened up. I opened. I was very vulnerable and transparent about my failings and the and the things that went on in my life, and so because of that, people who read it will come up and they will share with me their lives. Yeah. Because I was transparent. They become transparent, just like what you said when you speak. And what I've discovered is there's not a single human being that has a boring uh, life. As an interviewer, you know that's true. And when, you get, when you just scratch the surface and stop and listen, or you see, see someone with a limp, you wonder what the history is behind that. Uh, see someone who's angry, you wonder what that story is. Um, everybody in this world is Rocky Balboa. Everybody is living a life of adversity. But the Bible says there's a special crown for those who overcome. But we need each other to do that. And men need other men. And if, you, if there's not a men's group in your church, it's your fault. Start one. You know, we have um, Bear's Man Cave. You know, it's, it's a secret Facebook group, so don't bother trying to join it on Facebook. You have to go to deepadventure.com to join it. Uh, but then you put, you're, you're a made a member of our Man Cave, and there's men there that will sh share transparently their lives, and every couple of weeks we get together with a Zoom video chat where we can all see each other. And we model what it takes to have an informal type of men's group. You know, the type where you sit on the back deck every couple weeks, have a cigar and a shot of whiskey, and maybe <clears throat> read through, you know, part of the catechism together. Um, but where men get together and just be men. So uh, that's what we need. Joe McClain, um, we're about, we've run out of time. Uh, but tell me again, how can they reach you so you can come speak to the, to not just a men's group, but... Um, to me, that's where, you're, where you shine brightest. But where can they find you? I'm grateful to you, Bear. I'm going to be speaking in San Antonio this weekend, then Kansas in Wichita, Kansas in February. I'll be in Alaska in March. So I love the opportunity. I'm very grateful. But you can find me at CairoImpactMedia.com, C-H-I-R-H-O, ImpactMedia.com. Thank you so much, Bear, for having me on. Oh, man, it's good to talk to you again, Joe. Sick and Bears. God bless you. Get yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Please go to our website, deepadventure.com. Sign up for, for our email. Uh, we send out one a week, and you get a copy of the show before it even airs. And you uh, get a video version of that show, too, before it's even on the EWTN network. Uh, until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwoznick.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwoznick.com.